My good friend Janelle recently asked if I'd be willing to help her make a simple bookcase for her house. She said she didn't want anything super fancy. Actually, the more simple, the better. But she did say that she'd like to be involved in the building process and that she wanted to learn a bit about how to use some of the tools and how to make something like this. Well, I figured there's probably a bunch of folks out there that are looking to do the same sort of thing. So I figured in this video, I'd show you how I made a simplistic bookcase out of cheap materials using basic tools. And then I'll make it overly complex and dress it up a bit and add some Fisher's shop flair to it. So here's what I drew up in Fusion 360. This is a basic bookcase. Then to dress it up, I'll add some decorative molding around the top edge. And I'll do the same thing around the bottom edge. But that's not all. I figured it would be cool if I added a hidden drawer in the bottom where she could hide the TV remote from her husband and see how long it takes for him to go insane. Alright, class is in session. Let's get started. The plywood that I chose for this project was among the cheapest yet still decent looking of the options that were available at the home store. For the bottom, top, sides, and shelves of the bookcase, I'll be using this 3 quarter inch thick radiata pine plywood. As you'd guess, the first step is to break down this huge panel, and the easiest way to do that is to use a track saw. Now, if you don't happen to own a track saw, you can accomplish the same thing just by clamping a straight board down and using it as a fence for your circular saw. The rigid foam insulation keeps me from cutting into the work surface below while supporting the plywood on top. Next up is cutting down a half inch sheet of sanded plywood that will be used for the back of the bookcase. Now, I didn't even need a whole entire sheet of this, but all the half sheets were sold out at the store. Now, since I'll be cutting plywood, I want to use a high tooth count blade in the table saw. This will help me leave a real clean edge with minimal tear out. With that in place, I can begin to cut out all the pieces that I'll need from the 3 quarter inch sheet of plywood. Then I figured I could give all the extra plywood to my neighbor to make up for all he's contributed to my shop over the years. But then I thought, Nah, that'd be weird. I'd better just keep it. I mean, what's he going to do with it? It would just end up getting stolen again. I'll, I'll just hang on to it for him. Then over at the miter saw, I can cut all the pieces to their final lengths. And where multiple pieces needed to be the same length, I just cut them together to make sure they were perfectly identical. Then with some painter's tape, I jot down all the parts of me where I need to lose some weight. And then I can cut out the bookcase back from the half inch sheet of plywood. The last bit that needs to get cut from the plywood are all the pieces that will make up the hidden drawer. And once I had those, I could start to cut out all the pieces that will make up the face frame, the shelf supports, and the top. And those all came from a few select pine boards. Now since the boards weren't quite wide enough to begin with, I had to glue a couple together to be the bookcase top. And once that dried, I could cut it to its final width at the table saw, and then I had all the pieces ready for when Janelle came over. When she decided to grace me with her presence, the first thing I had her do was to drill all the shelf pin holes into the sides. These holes will let her adjust the shelves to whatever height she wants. After that came pocket holes. I just told her how to work the jig and she went and drilled all of them in no time. Then it was time to start fastening the bookcase frame together. To keep the pieces from moving when driving in pocket holes, I'd like to clamp on a temporary fence. This helps me get things lined up just right and keeps them from sliding when the screws go in. I did the first one for her to show her how it's done and then I handed her the reins and I let her fasten on the next one. Holy crap! You sent that one down into China. It's, don't, don't it's going to be screwed to the thing. Well, it's, I think it stripped him out. So go a little bit more gentle on this one. And as soon as it clicks, you can stop. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Once she had it figured out, she was a pro. And we could flip the assembly over and fasten on the other side. Not to the end because you don't want it to. 
Uh, I'm not too worried about it. Okay. I mean, it's it's not my bookcase. I don't care. <laughs> and with her doing all this for the first time, I was certain to offer some very helpful words of encouragement. Don't blow it, you know. Perfecto! Yes. You have a bookcase. Sweet! I'll take it home just like that. <laughs> now that the bookcase body was together, we could glue on the face frame pieces. These hide the plywood edges, but also add some structural support. We could have tacked them all in place with brad nails, but since we didn't really want to see all the nail holes, we opted to just spread a bead of glue, clamp them on, and wait for them to dry. With the sides on, I glued on the bottom piece and got that clamped into position. And then to finish out the face frame, I put the top piece on. And each shelf also got one of these pieces glued onto the front. This not only hides the plywood edges, but it also adds more support to the shelf so it won't sag once it's all loaded up with books. I gave everything a good sanding, but that revealed a couple little gaps in some spaces. So I just mashed in some wood filler and I let that dry. Once it had, a quick sanding to remove the excess and the gaps completely disappeared. Now to install the back of the bookcase, I need to cut in a rabbit around the edges. To do that, I'll be using this rabbiting bit in my router, and I'll take several trips around the bookcase until eventually I reach a half inch depth. Now another option would be just to cut the back the exact size of the opening and just pocket hole it into place, but I feel this is a much cleaner look in the end. But since the bearing on the end of the router bit was hitting the bottom shelf, it left a section that I had to remove with a chisel and a mallet. But that's easy enough. And since it's round, it won't get all the way into the corners either, so those had to be cleaned up as well. At this point, I could test fit the back panel and see if I got it right. With things fitting well, I could run a bead of glue around the edges of the rabbit all the way around the bookcase. Drop in the back panel and clamp it up to dry. And when it was dry, the clamps could come off. And then I could muscle the thing off the bench and back down onto the floor. Next, I could top off the project by putting the top on the project. I skimmed on a thin coat of glue, and then I centered the top in place and clamped it to dry. At this point, the bookcase, for all intents and purposes, was done. This is a super simple bookcase, very easy to put together. Functional, and it looks fine. But I'm not going to stop there. We can make it even nicer. But before we do that, I'd like to first talk a bit about the sponsor of this video. And that's Fisher's Shop. Man, what an awesome company. I simply can't say enough nice things about them. And the owner? What an amazing guy. Probably the coolest guy I've ever met. And super humble. He's got to be like the most humble guy on the planet for sure. You can read all about him over on his website at fishersshoponline.com. There's lots of other stuff out there too. You can browse through and watch every single YouTube project that he's ever made. You can stream every episode of the We Built a Thing woodworking podcast that he's a part of. You can save some money and go tool shopping using his coupon codes and affiliate links. But probably the coolest thing you can do is you can purchase and download detailed step-by-step -step plans for all of his projects, even this bookcase that's being built in this video. All the plans are super cheap and some are completely free. There's t-shirts and stickers available and... You can even get a solid black walnut laser engraved Fisher Shop table saw push stick that he himself made on his very own CNC from lumber that he stole out of his neighbor's garage. I'm telling you, Fisher Shop is a great company and I'm super lucky to have them as a sponsor for this video. Be sure to head out to the website and check them out for yourself. You won't regret it. Next was teaching Janelle how to use the jigsaw and to rough cut the opening for the hidden drawer. Great. And now open, we need to get some room up here so like you can just cut this. Just cut that piece off. Yeah. Here. <laughs> Your aim is off. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I drive. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay, so now you can position your blade here okay. and come out and then do a subtle turn so that you can come right down here. Okay. And then lastly, you'll turn around and then you'll nip off the little bit you left. Okay. Excellent. Nice. Flip it around, take this little bit off. Good. Excellent. <laughs> Great work. You ruined your bookcase. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All that work for nothing. Then I took a turn and I made the final cuts to make the opening just a bit bigger. And I felt this project needed some unnecessary walnut, so I trimmed out all the drawer pieces with a thin strip and then I had Janelle put the box together. Oh, wow, you're using glue like you didn't buy it. No, well, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I did get a little crazy, didn't I? You're gonna Do glue... we want to wipe it off a little or just... No, whatever, <laughs> just go with it. Sorry. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Perfect! Nice. Excellent. <laughs> uh, we'll just kind of schmutz it around here a little bit. Although, YouTube gets really mad at you when you use your finger to spread glue. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect! Nice. You're a pro. Alright, so let's do one, two, three. Okay, and then let's do two more here. Good! Excellent. Then with the box built, I needed to cut some furring strips so I could create a flush surface to the drawer opening where I could attach the slides. And those just got glued on on either side. A thin one towards the back side and a thicker one towards the front. Next I could actually get the slides mounted onto the bookcase. Then to attach the rails onto the drawer box, I simply drew a line down each side and then I spotted it through the mounting holes. Then I just flushed it up to the front and I drove in some screws on the line and that way I knew that it was fastened on straight. A quick test fit to make sure it fits and things look good. Except I realized I couldn't fit my fingers in to pull it out. So to fix that, I decided to drill out a spot so that I could easily pull the drawer open. But this messed up my walnut trim. So, naturally, I had to get creative and glue on another little bit to cover the plywood edges that I exposed. Once that was dry, I could flush trim off the excess and then give it a good sanding. Next came making some molding on the router table. I certainly could have bought some at the home store, but I have the machine and the extra material already, so I figured let's just make our own. I'm using a double Roman OG bit to make these decorative pieces. And then I cut the angles on the ends over at the miter saw. These pieces simply get glued and clamped on around the top edge. And the excess that sticks out the back just gets nipped off with a saw. And then I can do the same thing around the bottom edge. But I'm sure not to glue on the smaller side piece which will cover the drawer. Instead, for that piece, I mark out some sections to inlay some small metal plates. I honestly could have used a washer or my neighbor's car keys or anything magnetic for that matter. I just had to create a recess for it to sit down into. I just traced the object, carefully outlined it with a chisel and some gentle taps, and then surgically removed enough material so that it would sit just under the surface. And once I had it just right, I could attach them with some flathead screws. Then over on the bookcase, I drilled some shallow holes that lined up with the metal plates so that I could inlay some strong magnets. I just used some CA glue and I tapped them into place and they were held in there really well. And here's how the hidden drawer works. Janelle picked up a dark stain and got busy brushing that on. And then I took the little hidden drawer up to the garage so that I could vandalize the bottom of it with my laser. Perfect. The last thing to do was to spray on a protective finish. For that, I chose to put on three coats of water-based polyurethane. 
I used an HVLP sprayer, but I could have just also brushed it on and achieved similar results. After each coat dried, I sanded it down to 220 so that in the end, everything was smooth to the touch. Alright, now let's get this thing delivered to Janelle's house. Once I got it all loaded up and buckled down, I headed over to her place and she helped me carry it in. We got it situated just where she wanted it. I dropped in the shelves and it was done. Nice. Looks fantastic. It does. Just what I wanted right there. It's perfect. It really is perfect. Even though we made it from relatively cheap materials, it still looks great. Even without the decorative molding, it still would have been perfectly functional. But adding that trim, it sure took it to the next level. Plus, adding the hidden drawer was pretty fun. Well, I sure hope you've enjoyed this project. And like I said earlier, if this is something that you think you'd like to try making yourself, I have very detailed step-by-step -step instructions available on my website over at fishersshoponline.com. It's a great project for woodworkers of all skill levels, and you can do it with minimal tools. And if you're new to the channel and you feel I've earned it, consider subscribing. Give the video a like and drop me a comment down below. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Oh boy. Alright. That's going to be hard to clean up. I can do it though. I'm just going to get a uh, um, crap. I know what I'll do. Oh crap. <laughs> that's still really good though. I don't think that's going to... I don't think it's going to move at all. <laughs> Ugh. Delete that one. Well, oh, there's an outtake. How about that? <laughs> there you go.